When most people think of the graph view, they often think of those enormous graphs that they see online, maybe on Reddit or even over here on YouTube. But by the end of this video, you're gonna see that the graph view is way, way more than that. In this video, I'm gonna go over all of the features of the graph view, as well as my three main use cases that make it an indispensable page of my Obsidian Vault. So let's get started. All right, so here we are back at our mastering Obsidian Vault, and let's just take a minute to go through the features inside the graph view. This may seem a bit redundant, but it's very important because not all of these features are that obvious to understand. All right, so when we open the graph view, we have here four different sections. We have filters, groups, display, and forces. And let's start with the filters. And like the name implies, this is a way of filtering your vault. You can filter by all of these different options here. So if we come over here and press tag and then choose something like MOC, Obsidian is only gonna show us our nodes that have an MOC tag. And if we come over here to our tag pane, you can see that inside our mock, we only have these three tagged with MOCs. Then moving on to something like path, this is essentially just folders, right? So if we come over here to our file explorer, we have a journal, templates, weekly journal, we have all those folders, right? So if we wanna see just what's inside one of those folders, you can just press one of them and it's gonna show you what's inside of them. And obviously you can search by file name and then line and section refer to keyword searching either on the same heading or on the same line. Moving on, you also have four different things to toggle on here. So for instance, if you toggle on tags, Epstein is gonna show you the tags, in this case, marked in red. And as you can see over here by a tag pane, it shows us three tags because that's all we have in our sample vault. So yeah, pretty straightforward. And next one is also straightforward called attachments. So this is gonna show us the attachments on your file. So if you have any sort of media such as pictures or videos, and you toggle this one on, it's gonna show us our attachments and the corresponding note. All right, so now this is where things get a little more interesting. As I've mentioned before in this series, one of the many beauties of Obsidian is that you don't need to constantly think about organization and where everything goes. And because of that, as you're typing a note, many times you're gonna make links to non-existing notes. These are notes that you might in the future want to turn into a note. Maybe you're making a note on a history topic and that topic relates to something else that you don't yet want to turn into a note and it's something you'd rather leave for another time. So what do you do? You're gonna leave a link to it, and that is considered a link to a non-existent file. So when you toggle off here, existing files only, you're gonna see all of the notes that don't yet have anything on it. We're gonna get back to this as one of my use cases includes this feature. All right, so next up we have orphans, and orphan notes are notes that don't yet have links. This is different from the one that we were just looking at over here, because remember, that one doesn't mean they're not connected. It just means they are empty. Whereas orphan means it's not connected. Again, we'll come back to this in later parts of this video because I use them both extensively. All right, so next up we have groups, and this is used to add color to your graph view. You can filter just like you would up here, right? So if you click on new group, we have the exact same options here. And then you can add color to them. So if you come over here to new group and say, path and journal and choose the color to be something different such as blue. You're gonna see here, you see blue and blue and over here as well. These are gonna be the ones that are related to journal, right? They're on that folder. And this is how you can add all sorts of colors based on your parameters. And next up we have display. And the first option over here, arrows, shows the direction of the connection of your links. So if we zoom in a little closer and you can see here that this biology fake MOC is pointing towards these notes, which means that it's inside the biology MOC that the link is being made. So inside this note, you can see that there's a link pointing to all of these different notes. And in some occasions, you're gonna see that there's an arrowhead in both ways, such as this one here called home and then YouTube channel mock. So if we click on home, you can see that obviously all of our mocks are here, but then if you click on YouTube channel, you can see that it also has a backlink over here to home. So in this case, in the graph view, it's gonna be displayed as a double arrowhead. These next three options are to tweak small details that you might prefer, such as text fade node, node size, and link thickness. You can play around with this and see which one do you prefer, you know, node sizes and all that, link thickness, obviously it makes the, the links thicker. And then you have forces. This one is a little more useful than the one up here, which is purely cosmetic, because depending on your screen size, you might want to have things more squished in or not, because if you have a huge screen, you actually might prefer to have a huge amount of separation, such as, you know, a huge amount of link distance. All right, so now let's move on to my use cases. Now, our vault here is obviously quite small, and the graph view is probably the obsidian feature whose usefulness is the most relative to the size of your vault. The bigger and more complex your vault is, the more useful the graph view is gonna be. 
so I took some time to create a few empty notes to better illustrate my use case. If you're a visual person like myself, you can appreciate this quite a lot. So what I do is I come back over here to the graph view and I go to the groups tab and I assign a bunch of different colors to different groups. And I like to use the file name as a filter. So I'm gonna come over here, create a different group, file name, and I'm gonna type in programming. So now as you can see, my programming notes over here all have a different color. And then I do the same for my major mocks as well. And like I said in the beginning, these are all fake MOCs. I know nothing of biology. It's just something that came to mind. And next we have history, philosophy. And then once you're done, you're gonna see that you're gonna have a bunch of different color and it's gonna be a lot easier to distinguish the different parts of your vault. This makes your graph view much clearer for your browsing experience. And this is a far superior way of browsing your notes rather than going through a typical file explorer for a standard folder hierarchy structure. And as far as I'm aware, there's no limit to the amount of groups that you can have. So really your imagination is the only limitation here. So far we went over how to filter things so that Obsidian shows us what we want. But now I'm gonna show you also how to have Obsidian hide stuff for us. So let's say you don't want to see your journal notes. Maybe you have hundreds or thousands of these notes and you simply don't want them to be on your graph, which is exactly the case for me. And to get that, you just need to add your normal filter, but with a minus sign at the beginning. So normally we'd go here and choose path and journal to only see the notes inside the journal folder. But if we come over here and place a minus, now you're gonna see your entire vault without the journal folders. And you can use this minus sign before whatever filter that you have in here. So if we come over here again and choose file type and put biology, Right, it's gonna only show us the biology files, but now if you put a minus sign at the beginning, and now we have our entire graph without the biology notes. And you can pile these on, right? So if you want to not show the philosophy notes, all you gotta do is do the same, but for philosophy. And now we don't have our philosophy notes. And if you wanna add more, just do the same, keep on doing path. And then let's say we wanna get rid of these right here, which are journal notes press journal, and now we don't have them anymore. And if you have a very long set of things that you don't want to see, you can have a start note, for instance, you can copy paste this, come over here to a new note and call it something like filter for graph view. And then you can paste your filter equation. And this is especially useful for those of you that have massive filters that you want to have on your graph view. Unfortunately, there's not yet a way, as far as I'm aware, to have this as a native feature in Obsidian. And what I mean by this, there's not yet a way for us to be able to have a default filter always here. In an ideal scenario, maybe you could have a default filter, right? You could put in your massive filter here and every time you loaded up the graph view, Obsidian would not show you your stuff based on your filter. And I went over the Obsidian forums and I saw that this is an active uh, feature request and it's been pending for a long time. So maybe one day this gets implemented into Obsidian. And the way I got around that is by having a start node. So if you come over here to recent files, filter for graph view. And when you right click on a node, if you don't see that it has a start option, come over here to core plugins and scroll down until you see start and make sure that this is enabled. And once it's enabled, come back to the node that you want to star, right click it, star. And now you're gonna see a start option right here. And now we have an easy access way to copy and paste our filter every time we want to go over the graph view. Okay, so now let's move on to my use case number two. And I call this one picking up where I left off. Before Obsidian, I never really went back to my note taking system, you know, my file explorer and explore my notes. And why didn't I? Well, because it was hard. It was harder than even a chore to manually go through every single folder to find the folder name or note name that triggered my memory. Now with Obsidian, this is no longer the case. No matter how big my vault is, I am able to visualize and pick up where I left off on the graph view in a much more intuitive way. Okay, so let's get rid of all these groups and clear search and restore default settings. All right, so there's two different ways that I pick up where I left off. And the first of them is by toggling on the orphans option. If you're anything like me, there's plenty of times when you simply pull up Obsidian and start typing. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's one of the main reasons I use and love Obsidian, you know, just type away without giving any thought to organization. But at the same time, I don't want to have the majority of my notes in Obsidian to be orphan notes. You know, if there's a connection that can be made, I wanna make it. So to get around this, I have a monthly reminder on my to-do list app so that every month I come over here and toggle on orphans and go through them to see if there's any connection that I can make. And plenty of times making these connections are very easy, but other times there's not a connection to be made and it's not something that you wanna force. So what I do is I wait till next month and the month after that. And usually, eventually, most of my orphan notes end up having a connection. 
And what ends up happening most of the time is let's say that we're in March, right? And at the end of the month, I get my usual alert to go over my orphan notes. And I see that this month I created plenty of orphan notes and I go over them and some I can find a connection, some I can't. And then in April, I have an alert to go over them again. And some of them that I didn't have a connection to before, I have a connection to now. Because it turned out that in April, I made a note that is now relevant to one of these orphan notes. And there's a connection to be made. And then sometimes maybe that connection only happened in May, where I came up with more notes and I realized that the orphan notes that I made in March now have a connection with something that I made in May. And you can make that connection and link them together and therefore you're making the notes stronger. And the beauty of this is that normally when you see a connection, it tends to spark your creativity and open up your minds to things you weren't yet seeing until you saw that connection take place. Now there's no way to just show orphan notes on the graph view. But in the previous video where I went over templates, I showed you that I use headers quite a lot. And one of the header prompts is tags. And when I make a new note and I reach the end of it and I know that I have nothing to connect it to and it's therefore gonna be an orphan note, I simply tag it orphan note. And then I come over here to the graph view, I come to filters, I go to tag and orphan note tag is gonna be here. I press it and then the graph view is gonna be just a bunch of orphan notes. All right, so that's one way that I use to pick up where I left off. And the second way is just as interesting and it's by using existing files only. As a reminder, these are the nodes that have connections but don't yet have anything inside of them. So an easy way of picking up where you left off is to simply toggle off existing files only and see the titles of your empty nodes. You're guaranteed to find nodes that you had totally forgotten about and sort of pick up where you left off. So if you come over here and we zoom, as we switch this one on or off, some notes are appearing and disappearing. So we can see here, we have a programming note that's empty. I just titled it empty just so we can see it better. And then as you browse your vault, you're gonna see plenty of these notes that are empty. And then depending on your theme, it's always gonna have a different color between the ones that have existing notes and the ones that are completely empty. So in the Obsidian's default theme, it's just different shades of gray. So you can see that in this example, we only have a couple here. You have empty programming over here, and you have this unexisting note tagged to podcasts. And obviously these are all fake, it's just for illustrative purposes, but then you can go over to your vault and you're most likely gonna see plenty of non-existing files. And it's a great way to pick up where you left off. All right, so now let's move on to my last use case and I'm gonna call this one local navigation. And this use case is by using the graph view on your note page. So if we come over here in our file explorer and we pick one note, and then we come over here to the graph view. Now we have a local graph view here. And I went over this in one of my previous videos, but if you didn't see it, the way to get this graph view over here is to press command P for the command palette and type in local graph, and it's gonna have an option, open local graph. And once you press it, you can move it to wherever you want. I like it on the top right. And then you have a local graph view here. And this might seem like it's the exact same as the main page, but it's not at all. So if we come over here and we open this up, you can see that we're presented with four additional options that we didn't see on the main graph view. And these are depth, incoming links, outgoing links, and neighbor links. Let's start with depth. And as you increase depth, the graph view will show you more and more layers of your total graph. So it starts off at level one. So let's make this bigger so that we can see it better. And if we have depth on level one, you can see that our note that we're on right now, history node two is connected to history node seven and then to the MOC, which is the history MOC. And as we slide this to the right, we can see more and more connections. So now we can see that history node two is connected to the history MOC, and then we can see which notes the history MOC connects to. The more you slide to the right, the more macro view you start to get. So now we can see that the history MOC is connected to the home folder. And we can also see all the other mocks that we have inside the home folder. On the level four, in this case, you see basically the whole graph view. And then as you slide it out one more to level five, nothing really happens. But if you had a bigger vault that would warrant a difference between level four and five, you would see it here. All right, so now let's move on to level one and let's go over these different types of links. Okay, so let's start with the first one, incoming links. And this shows us which notes have links to the note we are in. So we're on history note two. And if we toggle this on, we see which notes are linking to our note. So we can see that history MOC is linking to us as well as history note seven. And to make this easier, this is one good use case of arrows. So you can see here that both of them are linking to us. So these are incoming links. And if we get rid of them, you're not gonna see it anymore. Next one is outgoing links. And you probably guessed it. It's just links that are outgoing from our note. And as you can see, our note is empty. So it makes no difference if we toggle this one on or off. 
But if we go over to History Node 7 and we toggle off this one, you're gonna see that we lose this History Node 2 because we have a link to it. And then you have neighbor links. And neighbor links happen when two or more of the nodes connected to your node have links between themselves. So in our case, we have a History Node 7. So if we have neighbor links, which we do, it just means that these two nodes, History Node 2 and the History MOC, are connected, right? So in this example, if we go over to the History MOC to give you more clarity, and we toggle on and off neighbor links, we can see that History Node 2 and History Node 7 are connected, right? They're a neighbor link to the one that we are on right now. So we're on History Mock, and this one here is a neighbor link. And this neighbor link feature is especially useful to fiction writers or PhD candidates, because then they can see a bunch of different connections not directly related to the one node that they're creating. And that becomes very, very useful. And the reason that this local graph view is so important is because remember that if you're using Obsidian the way it was intended to, you no longer have that folder structure on the left that you normally would in the software like Evernote or Notion. The way I think of it, this local graph view over here on the top right substitutes what on Notion and Evernote is considered the file explorer over here on the left. And if you have either a dual display or even just a big screen, having something like a huge page for the local graph view can come so, so useful. And honestly, I couldn't be without it. If you've been using something like Notion or Evernote, it's obvious that it's gonna take some time of getting used to using the local graph view as opposed to the file explorer. But once you do, you're gonna see how exponentially better it is. All right, so those are my three main use cases. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.